Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Alnock and I'm an artist. I work in a lot of different mediums and I create projects from small and mailable things to large and frameables and everything in between. I am going to be celebrating Trinity stamps today. They're just celebrating their fifth birthday today and I'm really proud of them. A lot of businesses never make it to five years, so make sure you leave them some big congratulations on their website and all your social media. I'm gonna be working on a project today with the most adorable little walrus. It's one of their new release stamps and he's so cute and he's got donuts. So I had to color him up because I love donuts and I love walruses, so put them together and I'm a happy camper. At the end of this video, I will show you how to complete this card because in this video, you're just gonna see the coloring of this guy and we'll talk about using colored pencils on top of alcohol marker, but the rest of the scene, you can learn how to do that in a different place and I will give you that information at the end as well as showing you if you're somebody who already is really great with your Copic markers and using pencil on top of them, I've got a challenge for you. All right, let's get started. The stamp set that I chose from the new Trinity release today is this little guy. Oh my goodness, he's fantastic. I'm not sure that I can actually say that three times fast, but the sentiments are full of puns, which is great because I love puns. And I stamped it using my Misty, using some ink on three, no line ink, which means it's just a light ink. If you don't have an ink like that, you can very easily just use a very light color and do second generation stamping, which means stamp it once on a scrap piece and then stamp it onto your finished paper and it'll give you a nice light line. And the nice light line for the most part will disappear. There's only one spot that it's actually going to remain in this drawing. So I'm gonna color it in first with an E43 and then start putting some shading in. With my Copic markers generally, I like to put some color down just to get rid of the white first for the most part. And I often choose the very lightest color, but in this case, the E43 I expected to be lighter and it wasn't. So it's gonna be my second lightest color and I'm leaving myself highlights instead. Thinking of the light coming from above off to the right just a little bit, there'll be highlights on top of each of the shapes and then some bounce light on the chest. And then I put a little bit of that color into the, the cheeks and chose a different marker, an E31, which will be a little lighter and a little more saturated in color because it's got a lower first digit and a lower second digit. So that's gonna achieve both of those. So now the body is all colored in and I can start working on some shading. So I'm using an E49, one of the darkest of the browns to put in some of the very darkest shadows. Now I'm starting off by putting a line on the left side of the donuts because there's gonna be shadows behind them. But I don't want them to be just linear lines. If you put just lines there, it's gonna look like you drew a line in. So I'm gonna add some color next to it. And then I'm gonna switch to a lighter marker, one step down an E47 from an E49 and carry that color out. It'll blend the E49 color and start to round out that shape very much in the darkest areas. Because there are shadows within dark areas and the E49 carries the, <clears throat> excuse me, the deepest darkest color. And now I'm gonna move around to the rest of the walrus and give that some shading. So put shading behind the legs and then behind the chest area. That's gonna make sure that the chest looks like there's a little bit of bounce light highlight. You'll see how that plays out as I get finished here. So the E47, again, is going to blend out those E49 sections, carrying that color across the body. This front paw, front, front flipper, I guess it's a flipper, <laughs> I left without any of the E49 on it. So the E47 will be the darkest because that may be out mostly into the sunshine. So it'll give that flipper a slightly different look, which will be fine. And uh, then we've got a dog hair on my, <laughs> my artwork. That happens a lot. I don't know if it happens to anybody else, 
but you will catch a dog hair here and there. That would be a Vienna hair. And I'm using an E44, which is stretching out the shadow from the, the darkest E49 and E47 into the lighter areas. And so then I'm going to go back to the E43 and just slowly carry all of these colors out as we get closer and closer to the light areas. And then go back to the E31, the original color that I made my lightest color, and go over each one of these so that then I get that nice blend. Now the blend is not perfect, but I'm gonna be doing some pencil over it, so I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna take care of that later. And a little shadow with this light color on the left side of each of the tusks. And then some color in here, some YR23 is what I decided to use for the cake part of the donuts. And I had an idea that I wanted to do for the frosting, so I'm gonna do a little rainbow because it's June and we do rainbows in June. And I'm gonna put a little bit of shadow in here, but I can do my shadows also using the colored pencils because I'm gonna do a little bit of colored pencil work there. So on some of them, I did put some shadows in marker and for the most part though, I'm just gonna do that in the colored pencil when I get to that point. A Little bit of a pom-pom on top. And then I used a black pen, this uh, Copic SP Multiliner. And it's a point two. I'm just going to draw some eyes back in. Now, when you're drawing eyes back in, if you've left the white of the eyes, you can make the eyes look like whatever you want. You can make them big eyes, small eyes. They can look different directions, etc. For the pencil color, I chose a pencil that's going to be darker than the lighter color that I'm trying to blend and lighter than the darker color that I'm going to blend. The reason that this works is because most pencils are going to have some opacity to them which means they're gonna cover up some of the dark that you've already put down. This may flatten some things out, so it's gonna give you that smoother, rounder shape, but you can fix that in the second step by adding the darks back in. But at least this gives you some nice control. You can get a fine point, use a good sharpener to be able to get a really nice detailed blend going from the lightest to the darkest, but you're softening the, the whole overall look of the overall shape, which is one reason why a lot of people love using colored pencil on top of alcohol markers. You can use them on top of Copic markers like this or on top of any alcohol marker. So here's a little different view where you can kind of see that the color is getting darker on the top area and it got lighter on the bottom area. So we're just averaging out the difference between those. Once I got everything else all evened out, then I had to go back in and add some deepening of the shadows using the black pencil. And that's going to give me a chance also to refine some edges. I'm working on Stonehenge drawing paper, which has more tooth than some other papers you might have tried. If you haven't tried this yet, highly recommend. And that's going to clean up those edges, make them a little sharper, because on a textured paper, you end up with a little bit of a rougher edge to the pencil lines. So tidy all that up, including up there by the nose. The nostrils, by the way, were drawn in the pen. So I got nice, sharp nostrils. And now it's time for the donut frosting. So I'm gonna put a shadow on the left side of each one because the light's coming from that upper right, a little line around the bottom of it, and then a highlight using a white gel pen. All of this though led me to realize that the cake donut portion was not really dark enough. It was just looking like a, a glowing orb of yellow cake. So I'm using the same 941 pencil that I used on the walrus itself. Didn't want to introduce a whole new color necessarily on that. And that gives me the depth around the body part of the donut, the cake part of the donut, as well as the frosting. So then I'm going to do the same thing for each of the frostings on each donut shadow on the left, a little bit of a shadow at the bottom, and then some highlight using the gel pen on the right hand side. That makes the frosting look nice and shiny, draws a lot of attention to them, and when you've got the contrast of those really nice darks in the walrus, in contrast to that really bright color and all of those nice white highlights, those really stand out from each other, gives them really nice pop of contrast. 
going to use the same shadow color on the yellow as I did on the orange. And then I decided to add some shading onto the hat. And the right side of the hat is really the only part of the original ink line that's going to show on this. So I'm going to even add a bit of polka dots using the white gel pen in order to add some interest to that and maybe distract from the line. And then we've got whiskers, which I'm adding back in in the black pencil. And I'm going to give him some freckles too. These are actually something called whisker pores, which animals have on their whiskers, pores that the whiskers come out of. And uh, there is an actual name for those. And a little bit of extra color in the nose to make the, the little highlight on the very top really pop. The colors that I used are all listed on the blog. This picture of this little chart will be there. The main one that shows the difference between trying to blend a really dark into a really light, of course, is the brown. But the others are just slightly darker or can be used darker when you're coloring over top of alcohol marker. But here is the finished little walrus. Isn't he adorable? He's so cute. Happy birthday to Trinity. I also gave him a little special setting though. I have colored him up with an entire background of a donut shop. Oh my goodness, so much fun to color. You could learn how to do this in the $5 class called Donut Shop Perspective over at Art Venture. And that's Art Venture. It's not at art-classes.com. It's only five bucks. And it's part of what I talked about in a recent video. If you saw the superpower video, you'll understand what that's all about. Now, something else related to the superpower video, but also available for those who are maybe a little more experienced with your markers and your pencils, is the Drawing on Nature series. There are 10 animals in this class that I released uh, a few months ago, I guess it was. And they're all done on drawing paper with alcohol markers and the color pencils. You can learn how to draw just one of these animals. Just sign up for one of the classes or two of them or something, or you can do the whole group of 10. A little expensive, but all of my adult art classes at art-classes.com are on sale right now. The month of June, June 2023, 10% off using the code SUPERPOWER. So be sure to take advantage of that, whether it's this class or anything else. There's a whole series of craft classes, so I'll put a link in the doobly-doo down below for those who are card makers, some suggestions that I have for things that you might be interested in. So I hope you'll find something that will tickle your fancy. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Make sure you go visit Trinity and wish them a happy fifth birthday. And I will see you again tomorrow, actually. There's another hop coming up and you're not going to want to miss that one either. Take care. See you later. 